Great that she got to talk to you because who knows the effects that that conversation had on her and maybe made her reflect on a few things. So again, the power of relationships, you know, that she said with a friendly person and uh, and brought the seed to her because it is by speaking and sharing that sometimes we get the message that we need to hear, to reflect yeah. and to see, to recognize our pattern. Because as you said in the beginning, we're so stuck in living in autopilot like robots and we don't even see what we're doing but then we might have one single conversation or listen to a single podcast and a little space is open and an aha moment comes you know if we just pay attention Welcome to another episode of the Love Can't Wait podcast. I'm your host, Shark King. So like and share this episode. And be asking, by the way, any questions, any topics, any guests you would like me to bring on, send your emails to renegademoney at gmail.com or just send me a message on Instagram or just click the link below in the show notes. That's the easiest way to reach out to me, you know. So with that being said, I have another special guest today. She's a spiritual coach, healer and a teacher. And she's also from Brazil, a place that I really, is, I'm lo really looking forward to visiting one day. She she guides clients to have to live purposefully from their hearts, fostering a direct, self-sustained connection to the divine within. Her approach to spirituality is practical, hands-on, and rooted in everyday life. Uh, and she, she'll navigate your spiritual path, ensuring you stay on course for healing, expansion, and the soulful journey towards joy, purpose, and fulfillment. And she'll masterfully and cleverly blend deep insights about spirituality with practical tips that speak directly to your authentic spiritual growth in a modern world. My special guest today is Elaine Ra. M, welcome to the show. So, where are you from? I am born and raised in Brazil, but I've been living abroad for a long time. I used to live in Sweden for almost a decade, and now I'm just moving to Spain. So this is my new home. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um... Well, I haven't got a chance to go to Brazil yet, but I, I keep hearing a lot of good things. So uh, uh, maybe um, I don't know. Maybe this year I, I might I might just go to Brazil for the first time. Yeah, why not? It's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah, country. Where are you based? Boy. Oh, I'm in North Carolina. All right. Yeah. 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 I've never been. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you're not missing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so how'd you get in the um, in the, I would say the spiritual space, uh, relationship space. Um, you know, uh, how'd you get in this in this this world in, in this area? And, and, it's, it's, and to me, it's very unique. You know, you know yeah. well, that's my uh, my opinion. You know, how'd you get started? Well, I started in spirituality very early in my life. Uh, I had a natural opening when I was a teenager where I started uh, hearing different things and non-physical entities. So it's kind of like a mystical journey in a way, not a very normal journey in a way. 
But as I went deeper and deeper into my studies and understanding better how energy works and and divinity, I, I realized that everything in this life is about relationships. Be it relationships with ourselves, relationship with others, relationship with nature, relationship with life itself. How do we perceive life? How are we willing to give of ourselves to life instead of just taking and complaining that things are not going as we want? You know, everything is relationships. Uh, with the environment and our resources, with the people that we love, with spirituality itself, with religion, whatever we believe, everything is about relationships. So and the understanding that we are not an island and that we can even disconnect from ourselves, that we need to have relationships with ourselves. Uh, so many people were living in their minds and not in their bodies and not in their hearts. Uh, we're reducing ourselves by cutting the relationship with ourselves because as a spiritual beings, I mean, we, we have the super efficient lights, you know, like everything has a usage and we work for this and we go to that thing for that and we grocery shop to have food, like everything has a purpose uh, that turns us a bit robotic. And we're constantly feeding our minds and our bodies, but we forget the relationship with our hearts, the relationships with our souls, nurturing ourselves with love, with beauty, with fun, with laughter. Um, so yeah, that, that's the lens that I see everything in life is relationships, starting with a relationship with ourselves. Yeah, I agree with that Perfect. one thousand percent. You know, so I'm telling. Hey, so how did you come to that conclusion that that life is basically about relationships? How did you get to that that point? Well, on a personal level, uh, it was when I was struggling in my own life, in moments that I felt quite frustrated, uh, quite stuck. That I realized this is about me and myself. What is it that I am willing? to do or not do, what I am willing to feel, what is it that I'm avoiding, uh, that I'm seeing that it's... Well, I came to the conclusion that whenever I am struggling, that life is not a hustle, that my struggle is a side effect of me disconnected. Uh, so, so from there came that, okay, I need to have a better relationship with myself, understand myself better and understand life better. Because if I am in a relationship with life, then I need to listen to life as well, instead of thinking that life has to do everything that I want it to do. Yeah. Uh, and in, in terms of spirituality, spiritual development is as well, this understanding that even if I work with elements and if I'm working with nature, for the energy of nature, I'm still asking something of something. You know, or if I am asking prayers, if I'm doing a prayer, if I'm asking something of being an angel or a god, whatever is it that people believe, like different people might ask for things from different places. Why are we asking something? What are we giving back? What kind of relationship is that that we're just taking? It doesn't really like reality doesn't work like that. It is a give and take. We need to have this constant movement that forms a relationship for life to be healthy. Yeah, yeah you know, um, I think we live in a world where people are so busy doing whatever, whatever they're doing. And, you know, they want what they want. At least they think they want what they want anyway. Yeah. But um, a lot of people just don't really have time to think. You know, they, they're too busy doing whatever they're doing and ripping and running and trying to tame this and that and the material gains. So there's a lot of distraction. I think a lot of people have a hard time uh, just in general. You know? Yes. That, yeah. So how do you, how do, uh, what what do you tell people? Because I know you meet people from time to time. What do you tell people that's like in that rat race? You know, they're trying to go up the corporate ladder. <laughs> you, know, they're to, you know, they try to, uh, maybe they want to find the, the one uh, you know, but it ain't working out at least to their standards anyway. What what do you say to people? Well, there's so many things you can say, right? The first one is just we need to get out of like autopilot. We're living like robots. So yeah. stay, taking a step back and watching ourselves a bit and observing 
a bit more is uh, definitely a first step to create this inner peace because it begins within us. Um, and another thing I like to say to people is like people looking for saviors, looking for things outside of themselves to save them, be it another teacher, be a relationship that is going to like save them from their loveless life. And the truth is you cannot like you cannot give what you don't have so if you're in a relationship with somebody you're gonna have to give love to that person oh, but you cannot give love if you don't have love inside of you no. you have like to fix yourself first and nurture yourself and fill your cup so you can create good relationships because relationships are exchanges it is give and take not from a mental level it's not like i'm only giving you this to get that that yeah. is the mind playing a game, which is manipulation. We're not talking about this give and take. We're talking about authentic give and take from the heart, because all the heart wants is to give and receive, you know? Many people don't know how to receive. So this is another thing that I often tell people. We need to nurture ourselves. And one of the ways that we can do that is our ability to give and receive. We need to heal that. Many people only give and cannot receive. We see that a lot as well. Big givers, big hearts, but don't feel worthy of receiving love and attention themselves. Um, we see that in small things in our behaviors. Maybe somebody compliments us and we say something back right away we don't fully take that in we don't appreciate the things that are given to us for free every single second so our ability to receive because we are all receiving love and attention all the time it's just that we are fighting against it without realizing and then our ability to give I, I see as well so many people that they want to give a small gift or something to somebody else, but they hold themselves back because they think, oh, this is not good enough. They would just laugh at me, which is becoming this mental game again of only giving based on what the other person is going to respond yeah. instead of being for love because their heart doesn't care if it's silly, if it's whatever. It's just, just wanted to do it, you know? So returning to this... Um, authentic expression of the heart is uh, is extremely healing of our relationship with ourselves and our own hearts well i already responded to your question with three different things yeah. <laughs> just thinking just yeah, keep on going nice. i'll try to keep it shorter no that's nice that's nice I, I, I love it you know a lot of people um you know they care about what other people think about them more than they think about themselves which to me, I always found kind of that's kind of that doesn't make any sense <laughs> because I always I talked to many people over years about this. I said, and I, you know, I, you know, being that I was younger, I wish I had somebody to tell me when I was in my 20s that in the next 20 years, half of these people that you know, you're not going to even see them anymore, you're not going to talk to them anymore, and that's not a bad thing. That's just a part of life. Some people stray away. Some people move. Some people pass away. Some people, they just move into different areas of life. And that's okay. So the people that you were worried about for 20, 30 years ago, uh, thinking about what they're going to say about you, you're not even talking to them anymore. But at the same time, you're thinking about what they're going to say, say or think about you and I was, you know, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I completely agree with you um, because in a way this is shame, right? We are ashamed of being ourselves because yeah. we are putting what somebody else thinks and judges of us before us, which actually means we're judging ourselves because we no. haven't exposed that to the other person. And we already made the conclusion of what they are going to think or do before. So yeah. truthfully, it is us judging ourselves, which actually means we're not accepting ourselves. No. And this is so sad. It because, is. Uh, and this brings so many different uh, problems, so to say, challenges, just as you said, that we are 
overthinking and caring too much more about what others are saying to us than uh, what is it that we truly want, which means we're not being ourselves and living our lives, which means we're not being very good friends to ourselves because we're judging ourselves so much. And what I see a lot in my work, because many people that come to work with me, they are looking for clarity. They are feeling without purpose. They don't know what they want. And I truly believe we all know what we want. One of the biggest challenges though is, is that we don't accept what we want because we don't accept ourselves. And so we cannot even state out loud to ourselves what we truly want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people. Um, I think most people don't know who they are. <laughs> no, no, yeah, and, and it's okay. Part of the journey. It's a journey of uh, discovery. So, the moment that we are willing to go on the journey of self-discovery and play with life, it's fine. You know, it's an invitation to go on an adventure within ourselves, because we are all a whole universe. You know, we're so rich. Yeah. yeah, but I think um, I was talking to somebody uh, it's months ago, or well, last year now, yeah, this is a new year. I was talking to somebody last year and she was saying that she didn't want to date a guy because she didn't think that guy was up to her friends and family standards, right? So... I told her, I said, you know what? I don't really think most of your friends care. Now, maybe some of your, maybe your parents might care, but um, over time, I don't really think they would care. I don't think anyone would care over time. <laughs> and even if they did, what's the, pr- they're not the ones in the relationship, right? They are not the ones yeah. dating the person. <laughs> Yeah, so, but I said, you're willing to sacrifice your happiness, or at least the potential of you being happy with somebody in in a relationship, you know, for what other people think. For what you think that other people think, it goes even further than that. (laughs) That, Because, you know, a lot of stuff people think, most of it never happens. Exactly, exactly. We suffer more in our minds than in our lives, for sure. Yeah, you know, so I think um, people have to uh, really uh, form better relationships with themselves uh, even before they, you know, um, Mm. attempt to even get to know someone else. I think this is one, it's like a cycle of failure. That's why I call it. This is why a lot of people have to when one relationship fails they got to start all over again yeah and, and it is keep, true and they'll keep on it's like a hamster wheel <laughs> <laughs> it, it is true that many of us are stuck in different patterns uh, be it relationships or anything in life at the same time isn't it great that she got to talk to you because who knows the facts that that conversation had on her and maybe made her reflect on a few things so again the power of relationships you know that she said with a friendly person and uh, and brought the seed to her because it is by speaking and sharing that sometimes we get the message that we need to hear to reflect yeah. and to see to recognize our pattern because as you said in the beginning we're so stuck in living in autopilot like robots and we don't even see what we're doing but then we might have one single conversation or listen to a single podcast and a little space is open and an aha moment comes, you know, if we just pay attention. Yeah, I always say, um, so there's like, I call these the big threes, self-love, yeah. self-respect and self-image. Those are the three things that I think everyone should focus on, you know, because Hmm. It, it, otherwise, it's going to be very life is going to be very difficult. You don't have those three things. Yeah, and I highlight here self love. I mean, self love is the foundation 
of anything in life. The only reason why we strive for personal growth, for personal development, for spiritual development, but anything that is aspiring to live better lives come from a place of loving ourselves because we know there's more to us and we would never hold ourselves back and shut ourselves down out of self-love, you know? So self-love brings us incredible amount of strength to keep going no matter what because we believe and trust ourselves yeah yeah it's powerful yeah and now a lot of people are i think this is this is my opinion i could be wrong about this a lot of people are kind of afraid to um i guess uh focus on themselves to try to become the best they can be because they're afraid that they're gonna uh be by themselves <laughs> really? I, think lot, I think a lot of people i could be wrong about this but just based on my experience um at one point you know i had a lot of people around me i had a lot of friends uh, associates mm -hmm. whatever you know uh you know when things are going good everyone's around you know but when things aren't going so good everyone is like ah oh, you know i'll talk to you later you know i I'll see you, you know, see you soon or whatever. And I, I got to a point where I was um, secluded. There weren't too many people around. And once I, um, you know, I got better, uh, you know, um, once I got better, everything got better. But I, I noticed that I don't have a lot of people around like that. It's not like it's not crowded, you know. It, yeah. And a lot of people are afraid that, hey, I, 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 I maybe I'm going to lose some friends from high school or college, or you know, a lot of people are afraid that, um, it, it, it won't, because you know, a lot of people say it, it's not a lot of people. It's 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 not it's not crowded at the top. <laughs> does it does it have to be crowded though? Because I mean, if we're also better friends to ourselves and enjoy our yeah. companies better, isn't it nicer yeah. to be our own as well? <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I always say. But a lot of people, I think they they want the crowd. They mm -hmm. embellish the crowd, right? Now I'm, you know, that that I never really thought about it like that. I, I always looked at it like. I prefer quality over, yes. you know, anything, you know, but a lot of people are kind of like, they love the crowd. They, they love, you know, yeah. it's weird. <laughs> well, I mean, it, there's an element of safety in there of like feeling safe when there's people around. And this is um, one of the most like raw based human issues uh, of not feeling safe uh, and the, the reason why many of us don't have self-love is because truly we don't feel safe in ourselves and this is the one of the first things that we need to heal on this journey of feeling that we can take care of ourselves um you know it's uh, all of us have problems in our childhood and things that we can point out to mom and daddy but as grown-ups uh, at some point we need to learn that we are our own mom and dad and that we can no longer point fingers anymore and that we need to take care of ourselves and that everything will be fine and it is true i have gone through periods as well where i lost many friends in this journey because things change so much i think this is a very common thing when we go for personal growth and spiritual development that uh, out of a sudden we change so much that we leave so much behind it just doesn't fit in anymore and it goes both sides like we see that there were people that were around us that are not good for us and some people think that we're not that fun anymore and also leave us you know it goes it goes both directions <laughs> yeah 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 that's been my experience too you know some people yeah. we still talk but we don't yeah. see each other very often and yeah. you know they pick up on that okay he's doing his thing or whatever you know yeah. And then you have some people, you know, they didn't say it in my face, but they'll say, oh, he's he's weird, man. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing videos online and <laughs> <laughs> talking about this and that and yeah. he's writing books or whatever. He's, yeah, he's weird, man. You know, people, some people think that's weird, you know, 
because yeah. because everybody's not doing it. That's why they think it's weird for the most isn't, part. Isn't it great that we live in a universe on a planet with eight billion people where everybody gets to do different things? <laughs> yeah, that's it's how boring if we all do the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, but people are kind of. Uh, you know, some people will say a lot of people have the herd mentality or the group mentality that, you know, if you're like an outsider, if you're not down with us, you know, or whatever. I just never. Um, well, first, I, I wasn't raised like that. You know, my, my parents um, pretty much uh, they told us that, you know, you, you can try different things. And if you like it, you know. Uh, will support it as long as it's not nothing negative you know that's i was raised i wasn't like um raised to kind of like um follow people my my like my dad used to always say sometimes you have to think for yourself use your own mind you know just because you see somebody else doing something that doesn't mean you should do it that don't mean you should try it you know so so a lot of this has to do with how um, it starts, how we were raised as as kids growing up. Yeah, and well, when we talk about love and coming from a loving home, lo a loving home is also a home where there is not much fear, you know, because the opposite of love is actually fear. And when we are so easily scared of the different, of the new, when we are so easily worried about everything in life, stressed, uh, restlessness, all of those things are coming from a place of fear of not feeling safe. And it's pretty hard to open our hearts, even to ourselves, when we are so afraid of everything, when we need so much self-protection all the time. So ability to just relax a little bit in not knowing and having a laugh and playing with life and playing with new possibilities that there is not a single way to do things that we can create our own path much of personal development and spiritual growth is about that is understanding that each and every one of us gets to live their life in their own terms uh, of course there is one path that is like the famous path like you study and you work and and you raise a family uh, that doesn't mean it's a path that works. It's just that it's a known path. You can see it everywhere. And if you decide to go on your own path, you're going to have to create it. It's more work involved, uh, but it is your own path. You can do whatever you want. You know, it has a lot of freedom and a lot of possibilities and meeting other crazy people who are also creating their path. Yeah which brings so much more dynamic and richness and inspiration to life. But let's say that yeah. most people don't like responsibility. <laughs> so yeah. there's a lot of responsibility, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, risks, if you want to really call it that. Um, yeah. But I look at it like this, this life lessons along the way, along the journey or whatever, you know, but a mm -hmm. lot of people, um, you know, you had, like you said, you have the traditional path or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you go and I mean, I don't mean it any bad because some people oh, don't no. want that. You know, some people love study, work, have a family. Yeah, yeah. Some people authentically love it. So I'm not downplaying it oh, in no, any no. form. It's just that many of us are following that, not from our hearts and just yeah. following what is without yeah. understanding that we do have the freedom and the possibility of doing things our way and playing and exploring what life has to give us. Yeah, of course, you know, that, but that, that path didn't work for me. I tried. <laughs> for me neither. <laughs> and, um, what happened is, um, I started meeting other people that took another path, you know, um, and, I was like, oh, I didn't know people live like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I didn't know, you know, but I think a lot of people um kind of uh, been doing the same thing for so long. It is hard for them to take the leap, you know, so to speak. And they they because they used to everything being um safe and uh kind of um predictable i would say yeah. you know they they know what's going to happen the next step or whatever you know that's yeah. the thing 
And I mean, we live such comfortable lives in the modern world. Like the level of safety is so high comparing to previous generations that had to take leaps every now and then and had to completely change how things worked because there was no other choice. It wasn't like yeah. just go to the grocery shop and get whatever you want kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like my parents, <laughs> like my like when my parents grew up, it wasn't like they didn't it wasn't no option. It was only one option. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like uh no, people bear, my parents grew up in a time where most people didn't have cars. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Most people didn't have cars when they grew up, you know? So it wasn't like if you're gonna get on the horse, <laughs> or go, that's how it was. If you have a car or a horse. And most people didn't have cars. So they grew up in a time where it wasn't a whole lot of options. You know, Um, people live on the land and or you lived in a a town and the town was hundreds of miles away, you know. So I think today, I think this, I think it's not my, I think the generation after me is, I think it's the first generation where they can really basically do anything they want. The possibilities are endless. Yeah, and that does bring two different challenges that I see much uh, with different clients and when I see society. One is that because there's so many options, people feel overwhelmed, which brings fear, and they choose to not take any options and stick to the old way. Because it's too much, cannot cannot handle it, it just creates anxiety, let's just not go there. So this is one issue that we're talking about here, the issue of fear. And then there's another issue where there's so many options, it's so destructive, with so many shiny objects, that it becomes hard for people to connect to themselves and their hearts to see what they truly want. And just keep getting distracted from A to B to C, and when they see, It was fun, but didn't get them anywhere because it wasn't what they truly want. They just went with whatever was given to them. So uh, these endless possibilities of the time that we live are actually asking us more than ever, connect to yourself to see what you want, because whatever you want is possible and is available out there. But you need to know what you want, because otherwise, you will get distracted or overwhelmed. So the need of connecting to ourselves and understanding what is it that our heart longs for is bigger than ever before. Yeah, yeah. So when did you, uh, I guess, decide, or no, I shouldn't say that. When when did you know, when did you have the confidence that, hey, I, I can help other people do the same thing uh, based on uh, my journey and and how I, I came to be. That's quite a crazy story. It's not a very normal story because it was. I didn't. I, I don't see it as my decision. Uh, I never thought I was going to work as a spiritual guide and healer. I doubt it. Um, never, never. <laughs> I actually went to business school. I worked with business development for a long time. I was working for UNICEF before I was working as a spiritual guide. Okay. Um, uh, I've been in the spiritual path for a long time, but it was always my thing. I never yeah. talked to people about it. It yeah. was truly my thing. And I just kept doing my thing on the side of my life without sharing any of my spiritual beliefs with anybody. And then one day about six years ago, I actually received a message during a medi- uh, I was not even meditating, I was just resting. And I heard a voice telling me, you were a spiritual guide, which already was very hard because it's, you know, from going, no, you you don't work with coaching, no anything. And out of a sudden you were told you're a spiritual guide. It's quite like, okay, (laughs) it's a lot to take in. Uh, But it was a very strong message because it, it didn't tell me just that I'm a spiritual guide. It also told me how I was to work, my methodology, what I stand for. It was... I had, it was one of the most mystical moments of my life. It was literally a second that it felt like I had read a thousand pages 
because the amount of information it told me any everything it told me uh what how is the energy that i work with the values the colors i had to change my name it was a full package of saying now you do this my child <laughs> and uh, after i received that message it was so i mean it was so strong i know it was true but i didn't have the guts to call myself a spiritual guide i did i didn't see how could i possibly like look myself in the mirror and tell somebody i am a spiritual guide and i had to work with myself with my own self-worth and self-love and self-acceptance for about six months to be ready to start calling myself to my friends i am a spiritual guy because at that point i was just like the people you were talking in the beginning how can i tell people that yeah. because for me it was so extreme it was just like how i like i'm a business developer how do you say that i'm a spiritual guy it's it's so like absurd and then i remember meditating on this and then the messages that came of meditation for me were like you know some people were mathematicians they teach mathematics some people are historians they, they teach history class and you are a spiritual guide you teach spirituality don't make it a big deal all of it it's just a subject that you teach <laughs> so uh with yeah. that i started processing and accepting it more because i think i was putting the spiritual guide on a pedestal and i know that many people do and i can see in, in people when i say that that many people don't fully understand what i mean by spiritual guide but i have made peace with it and they see it as just another subject some people were teaching people to write and to market stuff and i'm teaching spirituality that's all it is <laughs> yeah i think sometimes things take time for us to get used to yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, that's what I think, you know, or maybe some people would say maybe it was your destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I guess in a perfect world, who would be your ideal um, client? I work much uh, with uh, adults from 28 to 44 that I spread around the world because I started writing about spirituality online very openly. So I started attracting quite a few different people that are in different places of the planet. And uh, the people that work with me are normally people who truly believe there is more to life, but they are somehow stuck in their minds. They all have really good jobs and good lives. Many of them have their own companies and their own uh, projects. But, and they do, they have side projects as well, you know, like they, they're people with rich lives, but somehow their minds is stopping them from getting that bigger joy, the bigger purpose, because everything is there, but there is a sense that is not fully fulfilled, that there's some heart missing, that is some joy missing, that is a little bit too much of checking boxes. So that is a huge thing that I help people, people who are highly capable to do this shift from living from their minds to live from their hearts. Yeah. Mm. So if people wanted to uh, reach out to you and work with you, where, where would they go to? Uh, my website is definitely the best place to go. You have here the link, alindram.com. Uh, you will find there for instance, you put the link here of Lead from the Heart, which is a short uh, mini class telling you about the challenges and how to overcome them to listen better to your heart. Uh, but I have so many different freebies on my website and uh, a guide on what is spiritual growth. My website is definitely a place full of resources and blog posts that can enrich your next steps in your journey for sure. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and all those social media channels, but I do think my website is the most informative one if you really want to dig in into soul fulfillment. There you have it. Like, share this episode, tell me what you think below. All links will be found in the show notes. Until next time, we're out. Peace. <laughs>